Let's take a look at how to do batch exports from a StyleGAN or BigGAN model. So remember that StyleGAN or BigGAN has a vector input. Um, so those work with numbers as your input rather than like images or segmentation data or text. So uh, I'm already here in my uh, workspace. I am working with a, um, a StyleGAN model that I custom trained in Runway. Um, so I've got a couple checkpoints already here. So let's go ahead and click the export button. Remember that you don't need to uh, turn on a machine to do batch exports. You just need to have it in a workspace. Let's go ahead and click export here. Um, now with BigGAN and StyleGAN, you will have two different options for exports. You will have an option where you can generate images, or you'll have an option where you can generate a latent walk. Um, and we'll walk through both of these, uh, no pun intended. So generate images. Uh, so here you can choose your checkpoint. So again, remember that sort of basically all your options here will be specific to the model. Um, so you should probably play with the model in a workspace before doing a batch export. Um, so in this case, uh, we're going to pick our checkpoint. Um, I'm going to stick with the 6,000 steps. Um, we're going to set our truncation. I'm going to set this a little bit lower just to sort of see what we get. Um, and now the number of images to generate. So uh, one thing to know is that uh, I believe there is a limit of how many images you can generate. So you can generate between 50 images and 5,000 images, but you have to pick at least 50. Um, so let's just set this to 100. Um, and now let's look at our cost. So unlike other models where they give you sort of an estimated cost of just how long it thing they think it will take, uh, this particular model gives you how many images you're making and a cost per that. So the cost per image is one cent per image. Um, now that's still a pretty good deal because you're like, just running the model is five cents per image. Um, so, you know, or sorry, not five cents per image, five cents per minute. So you probably aren't going to produce five images every minute, or maybe you will be, I don't know. Um, but basically the cost ends up, you know, working itself out. I find this to be a little bit more cost effective if you just want a batch of images. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, just run this. We're just going to hit export. Um, actually, you know what, I'm going to set this to 50 just because I want this to run faster so we can look at them um, post video or while the video is still going. Let's go ahead and export. And we'll see this now running. Um, you know, just like other models, it's going to have to set it up. It's going to spin up a server in the background, and then it's going to run the export. So this will take a little bit of time. Uh, while this runs, why don't we come back over here, and we'll go to our workspaces again. And I'll go back to this model, and we'll go to export again. This time, let's look at the latent walk. So uh, latent walks are, um, you know, basically uh, it's the sort of moving from one point to another. Um, if you're not familiar with how a latent walk works, uh, I have some other videos that I can send you to to talk about vector inputs and um, vector interpolations. So same thing here. We've got some options here. We've got the checkpoint, which is um, you know what version or what checkpoint from our model are we going to pick. Uh, we've got truncation. I'm going to set this down to 0.7 for this one. And then we've got a uh, number of keyframes, um, the seconds between keyframes, and the video frame rate. So uh, let's talk through each one of these. So number of keyframes. So the way this works, it picks a random keyframe inside your model. That means a random vector point. Um, and it's saying, how many do you want me to pick? So let's pick three. Um, and that's saying, how many seconds do you want for the transition between each one of those keyframes? Um, six is a little high for this. Let's do three again. Um, and then what is your frame rate? So this is going to be how, how many frames per second. So this will be uh, three times three, or 30 times three, which will be 90 frames. So this will be 90 frames per second per keyframe. So I believe that will end up being a loop. So I think it ends up being like 360 frames or something. Um, so it's nine, 90 times four, might be 90 times three. I forget how that math works. Um, but anyway, this is the number of frames you're gonna produce. So that number of frames uh, becomes a part of your estimated cost. Uh, so here it gives you sort of a minimum cost, which will just be like how much it's gonna cost you like basically, um, I very, very rarely find that it goes over this cost. It's basically about this 50 cents. Um, so actually, what's kind of interesting here is this is producing more frames um, than you did in the image model, right? Like this is producing something like 300, 400 frames. Um, but rather than being charged one cent per frame, you're being charged just like a minimum batch cost. So I don't know why they chose to do it that way. It's just the way they do it. Uh, in, in either way, let's just go ahead and output one of these. So let's just hit export. And you'll see this is now running. Uh, this one actually finished already. So let's go ahead and download this model or this set of images. Um, and let's take a look. So now here, we can export it or open up the zip. And you'll see inside the zip, 
are a number of images, and each of these is numbered 0 through 49 or whatever. Um, so one thing to note about this is one, these images are cool, it's great, you just batch export a bunch of these images. Uh, the downside to this is that you don't know what vector each one of these is at, right? So if you want to take some of these images and bring them into P5.js and then do an interpolation that's a little bit more controlled, um, unfortunately these do not come with the vector position of each image. So these are just straight up output images that you have and you could like play with or bring into Photoshop or print out, um, but you can't really do much else with them. So it's a, one of the downsides to the way that the batch export works. Um, maybe they'll fix this someday. I've actually never seen an image that looks like this from this model. That's cool. Um, so, you know, just be aware that, like, unfortunately you can't do much once you have these images exported, but uh, maybe they'll fix that in the future. Let's see how this one is doing. Um, this one is just sort of just about finished. Um, what else can I tell you about batch export while I wait for this to finish? Um, so, you know, each of these is also numbered. Um, you could then bring these into an image sequence it would be pretty flickery and pretty fast. I don't know that you'd want to do that. Um, another thing that I believe is true is that these are random positions. So if you were to go back and do another 50 uh, from your data set, you would not get the same 50 images. So um, again, sort of take it or leave it. Like you're going to get 50 images and that's all you get. Um, you can't really come back and say, I like this one, but I want to tweak it a little bit. Um, just a challenge there of these batch export processes. This is almost finished rendering is almost done. I'll stop talking and just wait. Cool, it's done now, so let's download this. And there you have it, there's my, there's my video. Um, now one thing I think is worth noting is that, uh, again, you don't really have control over these. So sometimes you'll get a video and you're like, ah, oh, that kind of sucked. Um, because it's choosing these random points, uh, you don't really have a have a strong say in like what happens with those points, so just be aware of that. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it for exporting. So this export type will work with either StyleGAN models or BigGAN. So BigGAN, like uh, StyleGAN, will uh, takes in a vector input. The only difference is I think in that data set in the export options, you'll also choose a class or like a a, a category of images uh, to interpolate from. Um, so that covers batch export from vector inputs. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.